is preparing for a journey that will take him across the country and around the globe, pushing boundaries and breaking barriers. His mission is to inspire others by sharing his incredible story of overcoming adversity and raising $25 million for the Adversity Into Adventure Foundation. Aaron Baker, a true embodiment of resilience and determination, is setting out not just to cover miles, but to make a difference. Thank you so much, Aaron Baker, for joining me here on Aware Now to share this space and to share your story. Thank you. I echo that sentiment for you, Allie. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to share with our community and it's exciting. So let's do this. Let's do it for sure. So um, the Adversity Into Adventure World Tour, it starts in three days. On Monday, June 10th, 2024, at the Santa Monica Pier, your journey across the country and around the world will begin. So let me start with this question. How are you feeling? I am feeling, as I just said, it's a full spectrum of feels that it's hard to, um, I don't know, stay in any one particular feeling. I, I tend to vacillate. Uh, from one to the other, uh, quite dramatically, quite um, sporadically, <laughs> based on what it is I'm faced with. Uh, I'm, I'm putting out a lot of fires, uh, checking a lot of boxes, trying to just make sure that my checklists are are uh, checked off, that my wife and I stay in, in harmony in the process, and that we give our daughter a lot of good love and attention while doing so, because I my heart goes out to her. I mean, there's a lot in flux right now and her whole little reality is <laughs> has changed dramatically in the last few months so mm-hmm. yeah. broad spectrum of emotions i'm loving it lots of feels lots of feels going on uh, you know so for those who have not yet heard about adversity into adventure and this world tour of yours please just bring them up to speed aaron what is it and why are you doing it The Adversity Into Adventure World Tour is essentially a mission that we're really passionate about in motion. Um, I am a recovering quadriplegic for the past 25 years. And over the course of these last two and a half decades, I've accumulated a lot of great knowledge and life experience. Uh, I I have a lot of resources and, and friends and connections throughout a vast network. And I want to basically go out and empower other people with my life experience. I want to raise money for diverse, abled people all around the world. I want to empower with them through 3A Ethos, which is um, neurological research. I want to be a part of a, a bigger solution for solving spinal cord injury. I'd like to empower rehabilitation because I think uh, quality of life begins with good education and rehab, active, healthy lifestyle, and then recreation, which is the reintegration of a passionate life back into the world. And so essentially, I want to live the, the words that I speak, Ali. You know, I'm, I, as a profession, I'm hired to be a storyteller, to speak about my history, but I'm really compelled to be a story doer. Mm-hmm. And I find great purpose in being of service, of um, being in motion, in action. Like that's where I, I feel I'm most valuable. So when conceptualizing this whole project, Ali, I just I, I reverted back to my basic values. Like, who do I want to be, and what do I want to do with my time here? Yeah. Um, and so when I ask myself those questions. Uh, putting myself out on the road, my family. Um, I think it's the example I want for my daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I want uh, to go out and reach people literally where they are. I don't want to sit back uh, and wait for people to to reach me. I want to go to them. And so that's the, the genesis or the source of this entire endeavor 
is to go out into the world, grassroots, and be the example. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I I like this this quote. Um, There's two ways of spreading light. You can either be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. And so I hope this this little light lights a thousand. Incredible. And um, yeah, such an incredible mission, vision that you have. So let's uh, let's get into like the brass tacks of things because yeah. this, is a, this is a big deal. Uh, from selling your home <laughs> to saying goodbyes, you, your wife, and your daughter have been very busy preparing for this next chapter. So my question for you now is, in all this preparation for the journey, Aaron, what did you find you were not prepared for? Oh, I'm not prepared for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, th- these are the things that, that wake me up at 2 a.m. Uh, and are, are, you know, real legitimate concerns. This time of year right now, um, we're experiencing triple digit heat dangerous heat uh, in the parts of the country that I'll be soon in. Um, so that's a that's a major factor that I have to consider while when putting myself with my condition out on the road, you know, physically exerting myself, um, our living situation being in a although it's a it's a nice tour bus, it's still susceptible to to weather more so than a house. Mm-hmm. Um, just the the technical and logistical aspects of, of living on the road. There are a lot of moving parts that I have to get up to speed quite quickly. Um, and that, again, is just systematizing life to the best of our ability so that we can just become efficient in problem solving. <laughs> um, and, you know, just managing myself um, and and again, like I said, my relationship with my my wife and daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, although I'm not prepared for a lot of things, I am psychologically um, prepared to meet those challenges, and I hope mm-hmm. to meet them with some emotional intelligence and composure. Right, right, for sure. Um, you know, in the miles that you cover on this tour, Aaron, you will see so many places and meet so many people. Of all there is to be excited about, what excites you the most about all this? It's a great question. When I close my eyes, I can see the, the rehab centers and the hospitals these campuses that we will literally ride and drive into and I get to get out of that bus or get off that bike and embrace people, shake hands, sit down and engage uh, in conversation and connection. Those connections are just so special, Allie. Like you just see the thing that lights me up is when that other person is lit. Right, and you can see it in their eyes. You can see it in that energy exchange. Um, there's something really special and powerful about that. And as I said, that's that's one of the driving forces behind why we are doing this. So I I really look forward to those moments. We have one coming next week at Casa Kalina Rehab Hospital here in Southern California, just about 60 miles from the start point. I will be riding right on to the, the hospital campus and we're going to meet and greet all those patients and their families and the hospital staff and we'll have a great event. So I look forward to that. That's, that's yeah, all the stories within your story that you'll be able to tell after this adventure. It's, it's really phenomenal. Uh, you know, so speaking of on this tour, on this tour, you will be riding over 25,000 miles on intercontinental route that you've mapped with the goal of raising $25 million for the Adversity into Adventure Foundation. With a lot of miles to ride and a lot of funds to raise, 
challenges will come. So of these challenges, the adversity that you will face, what is it at your core that makes you confident about the task ahead? I guess just my history, Ali. I mean, I've, I've faced and, and endured significant real life adversity. And that's why I feel confident to even call it the adversity into adventure because in this process of survival i've i've learned that the ad- the adventure of life is truly in the adversities that we face and 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 overcome or live through and so i just think i, I know that this is going to be fraught with challenge but it's not unlike anything i've experienced before and i actually welcome it because i know what it's going to do not only for me personally but for my family i know the example it sets for my daughter and i know i know what it means to other people to see me living it and then to go in and encourage it in another so the adventure it's the adventure life, life is now <laughs> life is now ah uh- and so right now I mean certainly in making your mark in the world you also have a specific trademark diverse able diverse able this is a term that is very central to your mission it describes the world that you want to create with this work that you're doing so i'd love to hear in your words in its fullest expression what does diverse able mean to you Aaron the verse able it's it's the essence of humanity it's what we are collectively we are a diverse species of of beautiful loving beings i want it to symbolize our similarities versus our differences right at the core no matter how we navigate life whatever we look like or or are faced with we have a a uh, a uh, common connected united essence a spirit a love that if we focus on that then we can we can rise above all the all the other turmoil and conflict that we create amongst each other <laughs> mhm mhm so just embracing you know a more inclusive term mhm uh, i i don't i i think the the old nomenclature the the dividing language should fade away mm-hmm. and we are diverse and we should embrace that but recognize that um man we're better together <laughs> very well said better together um so while you're out making your mark speaking up togetherness um you'll also be making connections speaking of which you and i we were first connected by a fellow traveler dear friend and ceo of artists for trauma laura sharp you talking to another connection you laura your mother laquita have been connected for so long and have done so much to support other fellow travelers on their journeys while healing from trauma So, I guess my question here is what is it that you personally hope to give and to gain from the connections that you make on this tour, Aaron? Well, what I give first and foremost is is my time and love. I mean, I I learned that those are the two most important aspects of being alive. Share those. It's the only thing we can do. So I'm out there just sitting with another person that's facing their own adversity and just being with them. And that's my time. And then empathizing and and um understanding to the best of my ability by giving my love. And then literally writing checks. <laughs> I literally want to be able to to create impact both on a broader scale by empowering in high impact organizations as I mentioned in those three ethos but also individuals right all the the individuals that I'm going to come across I really want to be able to 
I don't know, just stimulate them, help them in some way. And money is an easy way to just change a person's life. And if I'm the steward of, of great resources, then I really am compelled and, and on fire to, uh, to pay that forward. And so any partners that I um, have the priv privilege of working with along the way, sponsors, donors, the money that we raise is going to go directly to this mission and these people. So that's my give back. Those are the seeds that I want to plant along the way. I want to be a, a hybrid of Forrest Gump and Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Doing it in a way that's not been done until now. So. Yeah. And what I get in return of that alley is just a, a, a full heart. Mm -hmm. A full heart. I'm living my purpose. I'm, I'm being the most useful I can possibly be on this planet. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything much better than that. Yeah. So let's talk about some uh, story. So while some tell them stories, you are living, writing, and sharing yours in real time. In a previous conversation, Aaron, you said, well, not in a previous, certainly in a previous conversation, and you spoke to it just now that you're more than a storyteller, you're a story doer. So, with the story you are living, writing as we speak, what do you hope it will ultimately do? You know, it's, it's cliche, but if I can impact a single life, if I can really reach somebody the way I've been reached, mm -hmm. right? If I can do that, then I'm doing my job. Then I'm fulfilling what I set out to do. So, yeah, again, by living these words that I say, there's a lot of talk these days. There's a lot of internet um uh, conversation going on which is great but what i'm really attracted to are those souls that are gritty it's uh it's almost a bygone era right like i'm, I'm going out there trying to keep the keep what this country was kind of founded on which was like a, a grit and a tenacity and an optimism and a hope and a, a passion for creating um you know i i want to echo my grandmother you know the, the fierce tenacity and passion that my mother has. I, um, I want to keep that alive and well. I want to, sh again, show my daughter what she comes from. And those, those characteristics, I think, uh, are very needed right now in the world. The words resilience and tenacity and all that stuff is really thrown around quite frivolously. And... I don't want to throw those around. I don't want to use those terms haphazardly. I want them to actually be rooted in my effort in life. Mm -hmm. And that's why, yes, I have a Harley Davidson and I have other like ways that I could easily um, ride or go be an example, but I want to push pedals. I want to work hard and sweat and show what grit, that word, easily said looks like mm -hmm. and I think that example will land in a much more effective impactful way and that's what I hope to achieve by doing the story mm -hmm. well you certainly have a way of giving weight to words through your actions and your intentions and um could it be more honored to be on this this journey with you to help to share and to elevate the story, your own story and the stories that you collect along the way? And uh, for that, we're excited, I, I guess, to say that we are uh, honored to be off-road with Aaron Baker as you travel along your adventure, your column, your, um, this story that you are living. Thank you, Ali. I, I think we're really going to, with the platform you're providing with Aware Now, 
magazine and the community that you have so beautifully built. Um, there are a lot of stories that we're going to be able to flesh out and share and reinforce everything that I just said here today. There are so many beautiful people out there that deserve to have a light shine their way, an opportunity for their voices and their efforts to be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, that's, I'm just the catalyst for yeah. so much in the world. You're the catalyst, you're the candle, and we are honored to be a mirror to reflect that. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your story, for sharing your journey, for helping all of us become a bit more aware now. Thank you so much. Perfect. I love it. Thank you, Anne.